Let's talk about surface feet per minute. What is it? Well, it's actually really simple in many respects. It's how many feet the tool tip or tool covers in one minute. So if we take a tool here and we unroll it, you'll see this tool covers a certain amount of distance per revolution. That's, if you remember high school geometry, is, is the circumference, which the formula is pi d. But the idea really behind surface feet per minute is that every material in the world, aluminum, you know, steels, different types of steels, has a sort of preset surface feet per minute that it likes to be run at with either high speed steel or carbide. And many of you may know that when you pull up recommended surface feet per minutes from tooling manufacturers or materials, and it gives you this range. And I'm here to say today, way overrated. And let's explain and let's talk about why it's overrated and why it matters, but it doesn't matter. Surface feet per minute and inches per tooth are two of, I think, the most common things that machinists talk about that are differentiating between sort of the hobby level and the real machinist level. I used to talk about cutting recipes a lot in RPMs and, and inches per minute. Most machinists, in fact, really all real machinists will talk in surface feet per minute and inch per tooth. So it's important to know, and SFM is a very important number, but what I'm trying to tell you is that the recommended settings aren't as important as you might think. The concept that you need to understand though is how surface feet per minute relates to the diameter. Of Sometimes it's the diameter of the tool, like in a, in a mill usually, or the workpiece in like a lathe. If you want to turn something at say 500 surface feet per minute, and let's say that that part We'll use a lathe for the example here. Let's say that part is really narrow or thin, like a pencil. Well, you would have to turn the spindle of that lathe at a really high RPMs so that every minute, 500 feet of that material or that pencil is passed. In other words, if you unroll that pencil for 500 feet, you'd have to unroll it or roll it many times. And so to do that in one minute means you've got to have an high RPM. Take the extreme example. Let's say you had a giant uh, part, like a 55 gallon drum, you know, something that's this wide. Well, if you unroll that to get to 500 feet, you only have to roll it a, f a relative few times compared to our little pencil. So the same surface feet per minute would have a much lower RPM. This is why if you've seen constant surface feet per minute on lathes, a very common feature, and you can see a clip here on our Tormach lathe, when it starts on the outside, it's at a slower RPM, and as it moves in, it gets faster. Again, maintaining that constant surface feet per minute. So again, surface feet per minute is important. What's not important, in my opinion, are the recommended settings that you can see a lot of times. One last example I want to talk about is drilling. One of the reasons that drilling can be really hard is that the outside of a drill, the two edges are turning it, it maybe exactly the right surface feet per minute that you want. But if you think about it, the center tip of that drill, it's barely turning at all in terms of the surface feet per minute. So that outside of that drill, man, it is having a, a great time. It is cutting at exactly the speed it wants. But the center tip of that drill, it is not really cutting or shearing. It's kind of like pushing because it's going so slow. So this is one reason why it can help to pilot a drill. Here we've got a slide rule speeds and feeds calculator. And I think this is really helpful because it illustrates the relationship between surface feet per minute and RPM and inches per tooth and how that creates our speeds and feeds formulas. Because again, surface feet per minute is important. What I'm trying to say is that a lot of the recommended settings aren't going to be as important as, as toolmakers want you to think. So we're going to slide over from type of machining, from turning to end milling. So again, the focus here is on carbide tooling. If you look at aluminum alloys with carbide, the surface feet per minute is it's the highest on this chart. And it says 800 surface feet per minute and up. So how do we use this chart? Set the cutter diameter or workpiece diameter under the air. So we're going to say a quarter inch end mill example in a mill. So if we take a quarter inch tool, so we've lined up, we've lined up quarter inch with this arrow and read the RPM above the recommended surface speed. So we want to say 800. Well, uh oh, that puts us at like 12 or 13,000 RPMs. 
That's exactly the problem, is that a lot of us aren't going to be able to match the recommended settings. Everybody is worried about, oh my God, if I deviate from recommended settings, am I gonna ruin the part or ruin this new cutter? And this is why SFM is BS. It's not BS, but I'm trying to emphasize this, is that for years, I have been machining at probably 20 or 30% of the recommended surface feet per minute. Why? Because of the machine I have, and it's okay. Yes, if surface feet per minute tables, as I understand it, were created in an ideal world, frankly, years ago with machines that are far in excess of a lot of the machines that the folks that are watching this channel use, and that's okay. The point is that we talked about inch per tooth, and I'm trying to emphasize, don't go below half a thou. Try to take between half a thou and one thou per chip, because if you go way below that, you're gonna rub. Well, that doesn't apply to service feet per minute. If it says recommended 800, you're gonna be actually be fine running at 200. Really, what matters is that inch per tooth. We'll take a look at the Excel formula here in a second. It'll give us some good examples. But the problem, again, is that you just, especially with smaller tooling, you run out of RPMs so quickly. Even the high range doesn't apply. Let's say you own a million dollar ultimate vertical machining center that has 30,000 RPMs and power up the wazoo and rigid and so forth. Frankly, you're going to blow beyond the recommended service feet per minute. So I really struggled with this because in some respects, service feet per minute is supposed to be some advanced chemist and physicist and what a metallurgist who's looking at the micrograin structure of how the tool cuts into this particular type of 6061 alloy and they sort of conclude that, hey, running at 650 service feet per minute optimizes the shearing action of this tool and this material and the longevity of life and it's not, it's, it's just not really that. Let's take a look at some Excel file and some of the recipes that I use and how they relate to surface feet per minute. Here's the Lakeshore Carbide surface feet per minute recommendations PDF and you can see in aluminum they're recommending 1600 to 2000. So first off, that's crazy. And two, we just looked at that slide rule chart that said 800 plus. So that's my point is don't get hung up because they're gonna be all over the place and it doesn't matter. Inch per tooth matters. Let's take a look at the formula. Uh, and this Excel sheet, by the way, folks, I think is gonna be the biggest takeaway uh, for folks that are watching this tooling series. There's a link in the video description where to download it. Use it, please hit me up with questions, but this is gonna be the resource for zigzagging, feeds and speeds, examples, formulas, so forth. But here in this little test zone, you can see if we've got a quarter inch tool with one thou chip load per tooth and three flutes, and we're gonna run at the recommended range of 1800 right in the middle, we'd have to run it 27,000, really? Yeah, 27,000 RPMs and 82 inches a minute. Not happening, seriously. But that's okay. Um, what matters, again, is that you're taking that chip and that way you're not rubbing and that's gonna make it okay. And in fact, if we go down here and this Excel sheet isn't quite done yet while we're filming, so forgive me. The version you download might look a little different. But this is the recipe that I've been running for years, which is quarter inch, uh, three flute now, 5,100 RPMs and 15 inches a minute. That's a one thou per chip. It cuts great, great surface finish, great tool life, and guess what? That's 334, less than half of what the slide rule recommended, one sixth of what the Lakeshore Carbide tools can do. So this is great. If one day you end up with a machine that can cut 15,000 RPMs and has the rigidity, bump it up or you can blow through it. But the, again, the takeaway, folks, is you need to know what your surface feet per minute is, and it'll be important when we come back to zigzag method, but don't worry about the guidelines, really.